Hello and welcome to Performance Architects How To. My name is Suresh. In this How To, I will discuss about Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition 11G Security. Today I am going to cover project goals. What is Oracle Platform Security Services that is OPSS, OPSS main features, architecture of OPSS, key concepts and similarities between OBI 10G and 11G. Our project goal is to have common security for Oracle BI, including OBAE, RTD, BI Publisher, BI Office, EPM, etc. Goal is not only to have security for all OBAE components, but also to all Fusion middleware applications like Oracle SOA, Oracle Services Business, Oracle WebLogic Server, Oracle Entitlement Server, etc. Our goal is also to have simpler and consistent way of managing security and at the same time separation of function. The key points are defining users and groups in an embedded LDAP server that is identity store rather than creating them in the RPD. When you upgrade your 10G OBAE, all RPD users and groups will be migrated to embedded LDAP server. This is the default identity store for Oracle BI 11G. You can integrate with commercial identity management providers like ADSI, OID, Novel Active Directory, Sun Planet, Oracle Virtual Directory, etc. And uh, I'm also going to talk about defining portable security policies based on application roles, that is, support for granting access and permission roles, which can subse subsequently map to groups in the custom identity stores. This will reduce the cost of deploying BI application and moving them between dev, test, and production environment. We can achieve all these goals using Oracle Platform Security Services, which is also called OPSS. And what is OPSS? It is the underlying security platform that provides development teams, system integrators, and independent software vendors with a standards-based, portable, integrated, enterprise-grade security framework for Java Standard Edition and Java Enterprise applications. OPSS also provides security to Oracle Fusion middleware, including WebLogic Server, and all the applications that I showed in my earlier slide. OPSS is designed to be portable to third-party application servers, so developers can use OPSS as a single security framework for both Oracle apps and third-party environments. This will decrease the application development administration and maintenance cost. These are the OPSS main features. OPSS complies with the following standards. Role-based access control, that is RBAC, Java Enterprise Edition, and Java Authorization and Authentication Services, that is JAAS. This is the OPSS architecture overview. This picture depicts various security component layers. The uppermost layer consists of Oracle WebLogic Server and Java application running on the server. Below is the API layer consists of authentication, authorization, user and role APIs, followed by the service provider instance and then the list of the providers. This diagram shows the alternative and simpler view. Earlier in 10G, we have only users and groups stored in either LDAP or RPD and the permissions are defined for the groups. Now in OBIE 11G, we have application roles and policies between WebLogic Server and OBIE. So in 11G, roles will be mapped to the groups and permissions are defined for the roles. With this setup, you will have users and groups stored in the LDAP, which are common for all, all the applications under the Fusion middleware, and roles you map to these groups are specific to the application. So different applications will have different roles, while groups and users are common for all the applications. And I'm going to talk about some of the terminologies uh, that we are going to use in the security, OBI 11G security. Uh, first one is uh, users. This is same as in 10G. By default, any user you create in WebLogic servers are stored in default authenticator, uh, which is nothing but the embedded WebLogic server. An authenticated user is a user whose credentials have been validated. And uh, role, role uh, is OPSS application Role is just a collection of users, groups, and application roles themselves. 
role is specific to application defined by the policy and roles have scope in the sense that they are visible only when the application is running. Most importantly, these roles are used to make the authorization decisions. And uh, the role mapping, OPS, OPSS supports the mapping of application roles to enterprise groups in the policy store. Policy store can be file based or LDAP based. The mapping between roles and groups are many to many. Roles are structured by the relation is a member of. For example, uh, if you have a BI administrator role, then it can be a member of BI admin group, BI admin user, and member of another role itself like uh, BI consumer. Authenticated role. This is default role that exists in the security system. You do not have to create this in any configuration file. And here you see the concepts that we are going to talk about. And the highlighted ones are the key concepts which I'm going to talk in my next slide. At the bottom you can see credential store, policy store and identity store. These are nothing but the storages where credentials, roles, users and groups are stored. These can be used for all the applications that are hosted on the WebLogic server. All the applications like Oracle Business Service, Oracle WebLogic Server, Oracle SOA, Oracle BI, etc. Identity Store is a storage where the users and groups are stored. It is nothing but a LDAP. Policy Store is a repository of system and policies and roles. Policies are nothing but the permissions. This can be files based or LDAP based. By default, all these roles and policies are stored in file based. Uh, and the file name is jazn-data.xml. If you have multi-node environment that is clustered environment, then it is recommended to have the policy store as LDAP based so you can maintain at one place instead of having files on every node. Credential store. This is a repository of security data, that is credentials. A credential can hold username, password combination, tickets or key certificates. This is also by default stored in the file based. These are the changes in OBI 11G. Identity store is embedded LDAP server and users are available everywhere. And application roles available everywhere in a specific application. User profile derived from LDAP server can be used in the application. Actually, this is a, a new feature which is helpful when using the scheduler. For example, if you have the email ID as an attribute in the LDAP server, then this information can be used by scheduler to, to send the iBots. Earlier, we had to store these emails in the OBA individual user accounts or we used SA system subject area to have the emails. But now, uh, Scheduler can use this profile to send the iBots to the emails that are stored in the profile. Now, users and groups are no longer defined in the RPD. Administrator and administrators are not hardcoded. RPD is protected by the RPD password. Administrator user is not used for inter-process communication, that is, uh, between the component and component. What is not changed? Uh, all the init blocks uh, that are in Tenji, external authenticators, custom authenticators, database authentication, SA system subject area, RPD access control, web catalog access control, and anything that works in Tenji should work in 11G. This is what OBIE 11G security concepts are. Thank you for joining and please visit our Performance Architects How-To channel for other videos on enterprise performance management and business intelligence solutions. Thank you.